Anthony, praise yeah, the Lord. Yeah, how are you doing, Josiah? Your book, uh, The Doctrine of the Trinity, Christianity, yeah. Self-Inflicted Wounds, yeah. was instrumental. And yeah. yeah, I'm sure you get it a lot, but you've really, uh, yeah. you know, affected a lot of people's lives. And uh, your your resources and ministry have made an yeah. enormous impact on um, yeah. on us. Very Thank much you. in gratitude for that. <laughs> well, you're, you're very kind. That's very encouraging. So were you a Unitarian when you came to the States? Or can you tell us about your oh. your, your journey? into I'd, I'd love to, i'd love to tell you that, that. yes yeah. uh, the story was then 20 years of armstrong uh, i heard radio luxembourg in 1955 and herbert armstrong was pounding away on the kingdom is coming the kingdom is coming well having a dad who was trying to get the jews and the arabs not to kill each other he died trying to do that really wore himself out didn't work this was a delightful idea for me imagine the nations beating their swords into plowshares very attractive. And Herbert was doing that. He copied that kingdom gospel, incidentally, from the Church of God's Seventh Day. He didn't he didn't find himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he copied it along with the Sabbath keeping. So I said, this is true. So off I went in 1965 to his college in California, Ambassador College. I was going to study at this one and only true, true college. So I was a Sabbath keeper. But being the only Brit, really, in the whole college uh, body of students, boys and girls, I didn't thrive at all. I was practically exhausted after five years. I, it didn't work for me. So my dear dad, who dad and mom loved me to the end, and dad came over and picked up what was left, left of me. I went back and I rejoined Armstrong in England, where I met my wife. Uh, I'll just mention this fact, and it's interesting. I never preached a sermon in those days, ever. I taught Hebrew, I taught Greek, I taught music, I directed the choir. I never, ever preached a sermon. I think once, and I was terrified. <laughs> I've got over all that. I've spoken, you know, wow. largely. Things have so... changed since then. Oh, terrifically. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I think fun. I think a lot of young believers are very zealous to just, you know, pursue the truth and Absolutely. follow God as much as possible. And so it's a misguided sort of zealousy to... Absolutely. It's based on a good point. You're supposed to obey Jesus. You know, we make much of the fact, and I know you do too, 1 Timothy 6, 3, if somebody comes and does bring the teaching of Jesus, watch out, you're being scammed. 2 John 9 is the same thing. Somebody comes and does bring the teaching of Jesus. So, I mean, it's very easy to say, well, well Jesus kept the Sabbath, so let's, let's get busy and keep the food laws, the rest of it. But it, it isn't right because Paul is being overlooked then. Oh, yeah, I Paul think. is really is really key. Um, yes. You know, the Hebrew roots, they, they either twist Paul or they try and just, you know, use P the reference in Second Peter that Paul's Paul was difficult to understand. Therefore, let us interpret <laughs> Paul for you. <laughs> and, 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 and while we're doing it, let's just get rid of Galatians. You know, let's just brush that oh. <laughs> You're so right, Josiah. In the, I was in the college, Armstrong's College in California from 1960 to 65. And I look back, and when we did New Testament survey, we did Galatians in about two minutes. We went quickly. But, <laughs> nothing to see here. Yeah, no, nothing to see here. <laughs> could, no, nothing. We couldn't deal with it. It's childish, actually. But uh, I'm, I'm so thrilled for the experience because I can relate to that now. I can understand it. Yeah, and uh, Hunting um, has a he has a he has a, a letter at the end of the, your book yes. here. Yeah, and he he describes that phenomenon of um, them just brushing over uh, Galatians. He was a lot a, of Hebrew was, roots types just say it's not Pauline; it's just convenient to dismiss it because that is really what breaks breaks the narrative for them. Absolutely, um, you're so right. Yeah. He was a second man in the Armstrong movement. He would have been head of the whole shooting match. So he we was the evangelist, that. right? Yeah. Yes, one of several evangelists. It's easy to be deceived in religion. And I, I used to say to the students, because they would say to me, how can people not see the truth of one God? You know, how, how is it they don't see it? So what I would do is walk to the wall and bang my head on it and say, look, I'm blind. Are you shocked? No, if you're blind. <laughs> no, not shocked. You walk into the wall, you don't see it. And there's a blindness that God has allowed, you know, under his permission. I see that. Mm. It is. It's a stubborn sort of refusal to look at it um, yes. holistically. And it's basically to infer from just the innuendo of, oh, follow the commandments and uh, th those who are lawless referencing, you know, absolutely um, 
Jesus's words, depart from me, you you workers of lawlessness. There you go. Um, it's it's these <laughs> using these key words and in twisting them in a way to to suggest. Uh, He's a yeah. Pharisee, basically. He's turning Jesus into a, a Pharisee. And then there's the Way International, who were Unitarians, but they then flat out denied water baptism. We've had to battle on that. I mean, that's silly, I think, shake your fist at water baptism. I don't know. And dispensationalism is the ultimate nightmare for me. When you say the gospel of the kingdom is only for Jews, I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that. Seems like every branch of Christianity has a cultish sort of Yes, you know factions in yes. it, and yes. Unitarianism also has its own variety oh, yeah. of cult, cult kind of Absolutely. followings, and um, it does. Yeah, it seems like there's sort of an an authoritarianism involved, where the the leader has the biblical inspiration, the leader has some prophetic insight that yeah. um, is new and <laughs> transcends everyone else. Oh. That seems to be the the you know the reoccurring theme of these groups i think Absolutely. worldwide church of god was kind of like that as well totally <laughs> uh, we, weren't, we weren't christadelphians talking to christadelphians in about 1980 there, and they said you know anthony jesus did not pre-exist and i said come on give me a break the rock that followed them you know you trotted that out but after two or three months harry tennant who was the head of the whole christadelphian movement convinced me that and they were doing the same stuff with the myth of god incarnate jt robinson is a cousin of mine who was at Cambridge. They were doing all of this stuff quite well. Not much good with eschatology. So once I saw that, then Harry Tennant said to me, but by the way, Anthony, you are the devil. I said, listen, we've been wrong on everything. <laughs> Explain <laughs> that to me. So I'm, I'm an absolute, not an absolute expert, but a fairly good expert on that argument. I'll, I'll suggest to a Christadelphian, you cannot have a conversation with the personification and yet Jesus and God both spoke to the devil. <laughs> you can't, wisdom doesn't speak back to you. You know, you say, hi, wisdom, how are you doing today? And wisdom says something back to you. It doesn't work. So Satan cannot be, I think, a personification. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, I reject. Yeah, <laughs> there is a literal devil. I'm, I'm with you totally. on that one. Uh, totally I'm it so only makes glad. sense that yeah if god makes beings with the ability to obey or disobey that there's going to be those who inevitably choose defiance and rebellion absolutely no, you're so right so it's it's yep. perfectly coherent and logical that there would be mm. an evil sort of camp of beings that are in rebellion absolutely. in one camp or another there's always a leader so there's going to be a leader of of the demonic entities That's right. and forces and, yeah, the Genesis uh, 6 thing gives uh, you, some Unitarians great trouble. I don't think that's so difficult. There's uh, angels, I, I think, as the sons of God there, and the thing in First Peter about preaching to the spirits in prison. Uh, but I, just taking a, a face value. Um, and I did ask permission to use your resources, your oh, translation. Of course. The, no, the please. One God, um, yes. Use anything. <laughs> one Please Lord do. Messiah translation of the New Testament, which oh, we all absolutely. love. Well, it, uh, I mean, it's not, and it's not perfect. Uh, there are things that need to be corrected here and there. And the things I'm not certain about in, in uh, Malachi at the end there, it's difficult to sort out exactly who is the Lord and the messenger of the covenant. Now, you, you can help me with that, perhaps. Um, the messenger of the covenant there in Malachi, is that God or is it Jesus, do you think? I'm uncertain. So... Um, I think that has to do with Isaiah, right? Prepare the way of the Lord. Yes. 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 So I see the way of the Lord is um, the way of holiness. You know, John the Baptist was a holiness preacher. Certainly. So the way of the Lord isn't literally um, necessarily the Lord appearing. It's right. prepare the way of the Lord is getting yep. people ready to hear the gospel. Yes. It's preaching holiness, preaching repentance. There's a confusion there um, where yep. people literal literally say well john prepared the way of jesus therefore in and, and the, yeah. the lord is in malachi is referenced to, to yahweh yes. therefore jesus is and yahweh. so therefore jesus is yahweh but that's that's um that's an inference that's not necessary there's another that's way right. to interpret it yeah if you understand the way of the lord is um holiness and righteousness and yes. john the baptist prepared the way of the lord who would speak through christ who would dwell yeah. in christ Absolutely. but jesus isn't to be conflated with Yahweh in a, no. in a ontological sense, in a literal No, sense. no, that's exactly right. We've we worked on that too. Agency is the great key. The shaliach idea 
I've been working on that and taking, developing something at my JAT Robinson, whose eschatology was chaotic. He did quite well on this stuff. And he points out that in 1 John, this is a corrective to an incipient error from John 1. I think that's absolutely fascinating. John's saying, listen, I didn't say in the beginning, Jesus was there. I said the word of life was there, prostantheon. It's fascinating. I think that error of a pre-existing non-human Jesus was creeping in and he's going to try to stop it. So we're a little bit concerned with that right now, I'll have to tell you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anything that undermines the identity of Christ as being yeah. a, a flesh and blood human person, not Amen. just a human nature, but a person Amen. who's human, who's conceived in the framework of time and the likeness of the first man, Adam. Absolutely. Uh, and it's every way, you know, akin to him. In Absolutely. His being a direct creation of God coming into existence according to God's logos uh, in the fullness of time. I love it. Preach it, brother. I mean, I could listen to this. <laughs> I could listen to it out. Now, that is, is, is really a balm to my soul. The, the language side of me is very useful here. You know, I've had from my, my training in England, uh, we did German at 13. Knew nothing about mathematics. That's probably a bad idea. Nothing about uh, calculus. At 13, we were either classicists doing Latin and Greek or language people. I happened to have a guy called Ken Cha who taught me German and he pounded this stuff in me. And it's absolutely been invaluable because reading the German and the French, there's so many brilliant people out there, but the church doesn't listen to them. Yeah, yeah. And like, you'll, you'll pick up on things like ego and me, like in yeah. French, there's an equivalent, like it's me, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's just a, a common way of saying identifying yourself that is so key and the other one is psalm 110 one for us where that second lord is an adoni which is not adonai you can spend the rest of our ministries just concentrating on that you've heard that so, messiah is coming the lady says <laughs> i am the one speaking to who the messiah that's like an ego in me he didn't say i'm god you know that's that's just agony yeah right? it's so bad where's this jesus ego in me it's me i'm here you know i'm him <laughs> and by the way i'm god we know that the Christ, you know, Messiah is coming and yes. he will enlighten us to all things. It go at me. I, I'm him. That's me. I'm the, I'm the Messiah, the Christ. They picked up stones to stone him and because, yeah. or he said, you know, unless you believe that I am he, you uh, will die in your sins. Yes. And Isn't then they ask, who right? are you? It's, yes. They, they're not, oh, you're calling yourself God. They're saying, who are you? And he says, who I've been telling you from the beginning. Yes. And when you yes. see the son of man lifted up, you will know that I am he. Yeah, so the pattern is always identifying himself as the Son of Man, the Christ. Absolutely, uh, always. Yeah. That is so and, key. Uh, I want to ask you about Psalms 110, because yeah. uh, people claim in verse 5, Ad Adonai is used yeah. of Christ. Okay. Yeah. You have Adonai, Adonai in verse 5. Adonai, yeah. Adonai. That's, that you have numbers of examples of that. That's God at your right hand. It's a reverse mm -hmm. image. To have God at your right hand in verse 5 Okay. It's wonderful. Yeah. That works beautifully. It's in the standard commentaries, by the way. There so, are if, yeah. Numbers. If I'm given the blessing, the anointing, the authority of God, that's a way of saying God's at my right hand. Oh, totally. Not that he's subservient to me, but he's charged yeah. me, or he's endorsed me, or he's you know yep. basically empowered me yep. to uh, totally endow me with, with his power. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of hard for some people to swallow that that concept. But, it is. Uh, it's in Psalm 109, incidentally. The one of one of this, is. there's one at the end of the preceding psalm has that and there's one the one or two others where god is at your right hand if you've got god fighting for you on your right hand you're doing well so the the rabbis have done well mostly with their pointing you know it's, it's people say oh well you can't put it any stock on the pointing how do you know they didn't make it crooked and then i say to them well you're telling me that in this one psalm they got it wrong because you can look at 465 let's see how 195 plus 250, 350, 450. You can look at 460 samples of Adonai and Adonai. And obviously, Adonai is, is Abraham. Adonai is a human being. Obviously, ah, when you get to Psalm 110, one, they got it all wrong. That's exactly what MacArthur it's... is a man I would like to win. You, I don't know if you know this, but John MacArthur, who is very talented as a writer and, and gifted speaker, at one time, he didn't believe in the eternal generation of the sun. And he wrote a commentary on Hebrews where he denied the eternal generation of the sun, which is a nonsense term for me. And he was under pressure from evangelicals, so he caved in and said, oh, I'm a good Trinitarian. 
I think in, in the Reformed theology camp, there are these people who are skeptical or express Absolutely. some sort of reservation. It's so, yeah, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and Andrews Norton, the guy at Harvard, I don't know if you've seen that book, Reasons for Not Believing the Doctrines of the Trinity, Andrews Norton, N-O-R-T-O-N. And I trot this out, you know, John Milton, John Locke, and Sir Isaac Newton were certainly the brightest people of their century. They were vigorous non-Trinitarians, all three of them. That gives me a certain comfort. I don't want to be doing some wacko thing that I've dreamed of. Yeah, there's these powerful, you know, it's just a powerful testimony, these brilliant thinkers. If you detach yourself from the brainwashing and indoctrination of the church, you can approach these things and come to a, a realization that um, yes. it's not it's not it's not at all like we what we've been told but that's only one piece of the puzzle it you is. need the gospel the kingdom and you also need the new covenant realization that Absolutely. we live by the spirit yeah i was just reading um, there a, a text that i haven't used for a while but really nice there in deuteronomy it says i did not give the sabbath to the fathers i gave it to you israel that's interesting yeah, it was a revelation, an unfolding revelation. It Absolutely. didn't come from the beginning of time. No one practiced no. it uh, no. before. My Armstrong experience was really good training for me. I've been there. I know what that's like to say, hey, my guru, who had no degrees in anything much, but God used it. God can use these events, obviously, as good training and to gain sympathy for other people who are going through it, too, now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Sabbath, even though, you know, God rested on the seventh day, yes. Jesus said, I am working and my Father is working. So, I don't think it's difficult. So, Barbara and I say to each other, what if this is right? It's not because we're very clever, but what if this is right? It means that trillions of people lived and died without any good knowledge. So we cautiously believe in the wider hope. I, I'm simply saying, Jesus said, if I hadn't come and told you, you wouldn't be guilty. That allows a lot of scope that he can deal with all of these people, trillions of them, who really cannot be judged by the standard that you and I could be. I think that's a, a rather health-giving idea, the wider hope, so-called. Not universalism. I don't think everybody gets saved. Yeah, we have to trust that God will just will yes. judge um, justly based on the circumstances Absolutely. a lot of these passages really speak in a blunt <laughs> you know when, when peter saw you know all the the, the unclean things that and yep. god tells him to eat <laughs> to kill and eat three times Not he really had life. he really had to hit him between the eyes to get <laughs> to sink that message through that uh i understand that this, yeah. this legalism this is an obstacle to my you know my plan to spread the gospel to the yes. four corners of the earth. Yes, and uh, that's so well, right. Yeah, when we impose these requirements that are superficial and secondary to yes. loving your neighbor and to obedience and living by the Spirit, it becomes yeah. an impediment. It actually is counterproductive to God's plan and, and hope oh. that as many people as possible will enter into the kingdom. <laughs> I, I know, I love that. Freedom Galatians is, is wonderful. Uh, we do the 19th to the 29th verse, you know, with people. Until faith came, we were caught under the law. But when faith came, namely the faith of Jesus and the preaching of the kingdom, we're not under the law. And so you get this famous text, you know, I, Paul, am not under the law. We have Unitarians, I won't name them, who say, oh, that couldn't be right. Paul is not saying that. He's saying I'm not under the penalty of the law. He didn't say, I'm not under the penalty of the law. He said, I'm not under the law. So these hang-ups, I hate to tell you this, are well and alive in some of our Unitarian leaders, even. Exactly. Yeah, and sometimes I worry that actually most Unitarians are legal, you know, they are Hebrew roots, tenacity. they are Torah observant. And so, yep. yeah, it's it's a huge um, division between us. And mm -hmm. it, it, I think it's, a, it's an important division, like... We need yeah. to be united as possible, but on this point, it's a totally different paradigm. You, you, you're either under, you know, a written code, you know, or yeah. you're living and abiding by the Spirit. The question that we'd put, what is the Torah of Messiah? The Torah of Messiah is the teaching of Jesus. Uh, ah. You know, when Jesus said, I came not to abolish the law and the prophets, yeah. I came to fulfill it. Oh. So, yeah, Jesus is the Torah. Jesus overshadows yes. Yes. Um, so how, how would you, what would you describe as the Torah being in a more fundamental sense? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you, you've said it well in the course of our discussion. The Torah in the spirit is absolutely what we have to do. But the Torah in the letter, so the question is, what is the letter of the law as distinct from the spirit of the law? 
That's the difference between the Torah of Messiah, under which Paul clearly is. He's so clear there in First Corinthians 9. I'm willing to go and keep the Sabbath with a Sabbath keeper if I can win him. I understand that. I won't ask for pork, you know, in a Jewish home. That's silly. I, uh, example would be alcohol. You know, in England, uh, alcohol is more reasonably treated sometimes than in America. The Southern Baptists here in Georgia will want to put me in eternal hellfire if I had that much wine. But I do think that Jesus yeah, turned Jesus water was into accused wine. of eating and drinking. Um, I'm yes. sure it wasn't just uh, drinking water. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, we're given a brain for a reason. Paul says, I pray with my mind. I also pray in the spirit. So, of course, um, one way is, you know, just, you know, with intelligible thoughts and speech. And another way is just, you know, let God work on you and sort of mm -hmm. transform you. Absolutely. Your, your brain chemistry and your, your, your countenance can be transformed by, yep. by praying in the spirit. And so, yeah, yep. this isn't just theoretical. This is the power of God working in us, transforming us. This is Absolutely. a real... This is the real bread. This is the good stuff. This is the joy of the Lord that we walk in. Yeah. Jesus is our Sabbath perpetually. It's not one day a week. It's That's right. every time we come to God in That's prayer. Right. That's right. We should rejoice always and uh, always give Absolutely. thanks to God. Absolutely. It sounds awfully like what Paul said. Yeah. Life is certainly better. I can compare my present life with the Armstrong days. It didn't work for me.